producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the element. Only on the element. What up, Mr. Instro? What up, what up, what up? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You How like, are you? You like my voice? You like my uh, voice? Yo, you were like... <laughs> I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. Yes, I'm with the intro. Palabalo yi, palabalo yi. Yeah, once and for all. Exactly. It's just gone 24 minutes before we hit uh, 7 o'clock. It is officially time for us to get into the producer's spotlight because Mr. Instro is here. Hi, 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 hi. What's happening today? I told you I slept. <laughs> I told you I slept, so it's a little bit better. So we are officially getting into the producer spotlight. If it is your first time plugging in, welcome. You have definitely made a good choice. This is where we take a look at production Mm -hmm. uh, because we felt like we just needed to show a lot more love to it because sometimes it does not get the respect and love that it deserves. So every Wednesday, half past six to half past seven, one of my favorite producers comes through and puts us on game about one of his favorites, one of your favorites, and we learn a lot more about them, about production in general, General, and we also walk away with life nuggets. How good is that? At Mr. Underscore Instro is where you can find him on social media. The hashtag is Producer Spotlight. Also, the other two hashtags are hashtag The Element and hashtag For the Love of Hip Hop. Just had to do the serious official. Yeah, that was an amazing intro, by the way. Dang. You have me blushing and all. Oh, Mr. Instro. I could you look nice. I really like your jacket. Thank you. It's uh, representing the elements of hip hop. Of I course. feel like I feel it's like it should be exactly. Exactly. Well, when, uh, well, when, uh, people who understand. Accordingly. You are- yes! <laughs> <laughs> so nice, you know, when you have team members. Baba right. You look fantastic, Thank darling. You. Appreciate How are you feeling? How's your Wednesday been? Um, I'm feeling good. Yeah. I'm excited about this specific producer that we're going to cover because yeah. he is. Um, one of the few producers that really like Im- influenced me while I was coming up and while I was studying how to oh. be a producer. So yeah, shout out to uh, the incredible West Coast, incredible uh, DJ Quick. Yeah, that's who we're covering today. That is who we are covering today. So we've got two minutes before we hit uh, twenty-two seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the official bio yes, that we got uh, off off the webs, and then uh, we're going to take a short money break and music break, and then when we come back, we're officially going to get into it. So shout out to AllMusic.com, specifically to Jason Birchmeyer. I really hope I pronounced the surname correctly. Uh, who put together this bio on a DJ Quick, one of the most revered figures in rap since his early early 90s debut dj quick emerged as a formidable rapper producer and extended his career working primarily as a funk inspired beat maker for stars and prodigies alike oh jason you write so good mm. quick born david marvin blake made a name for himself in his native compton california by compiling mixtapes that also featured amg second to none and high c on the basis of these tapes he was signed to profile and debuted with quick is the name in nine 1991 I had been alive for a year I just wanted to put that out there yeah. on which he produced all the tracks and rarely shared the mic a rare solo rap artist to do so the album spawned the top 20 billboard R&B hip hop chart hits tonight and born and raised in Compton on its way to Rear Platinum certification through the 90s DJ Quick added to his solo discography with Way Too Funky 1992 Safe and Sound in 1995 and Rhythm Alism in 1998 all three of which was certified gold yep. during this decade quick racked up outside production credits as part of penthouse players click and granted beats to several fellow rappers mostly west coast associates but his most successful collaborative effort is put down as tony tony tones let's get down, sh- get down let's that get joint down. classic classic on, and just just before we down. go very interesting yeah. uh, uh, nugget there uh, you know, uh, profile. You mentioned uh, profile records, mm-hmm. uh, the label that he signed to, like mm-hmm. the, f- the very first one. That's that's the same label that uh, signed Run DMC. Yo, yep. oh, that's look, how big look at it me. is. I'm wearing my Adidas. 
Oh, on hip hop's birthday. Fitting. You Very understand? Fitting. Oh, you understand? But everything aligns. All right, it's just gone 20 to 7. We are going to take uh, that money and music break. When we come back, we officially get into the producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. All right, it's just gone quarter to 7. We just got yelled at in the studio. You've got five minutes for the segment. Ish. All right, Ma. Uh, thank you. It is the producer spotlight. If you just walked in, you're wondering what segment we have five minutes for. The second part of the producer spotlight. We just mentioned just before we went on our musical and money break that we're taking a look at DJ Quick. Our uh, professor weekly mm-hmm. is Mr. Instro. He is here. That's the baritone that you hear. I'll, I'll accept. I'll accept, Professor. All right, Prof. Where are we going? Where do we start? Yes, we start from the beginning. So. I- So DJ Quick is the youngest of 10 kids. (laughs) 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 You know, as a woman, I'm like 10 times. Yeah. The youngest of 10 kids. Hectic. um, Which kind of gives you an idea of his environment. You know, um, lots of people around, lots of uh, brothers and sisters. Yeah. um, Lots of competing. Um, but the good thing is, uh, his mom would always like just throw on some records and, you know, uh, he kind of caught the musical ear ah. early in his life, you know? And I think that's like a, such a great example, uh, a great, uh, example for all the last bonds, you know, I think about my brother right now and I'm mm-hmm. like, man, he's so lucky because he got exposed to really dope music at like a, a very young age, you know, to be able to to produce at eight years old, you know, so. Hey, Hope did what? Yeah, his first record, he was eight years old. Hope, come to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you know, I think there, there are certain benefits that come with being the last born and you know the the mom the mom will, will take special uh, care of you special attention and um I, I i think that kind of worked well for him yeah. i mean we certainly hope that dj quick is, is a wonderful human you know and has broken the last born stereotype right right because that's who you young but but like oh. it, it worked i mean if 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 the whole point was to uh, you know harness the musical skill then i mean you know he he's become the greatest now he's yeah. become one of the best that we know because he's he's created a sound you know like i think that's every music producer's dream to be able to create a sound that's distinctly yours uh-huh, people yes. are people are, are are making music that mimic his sound mm-hmm. today you hear your king kuntas yeah you know you 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 get references like that um him and and dj battle cat they they are you know the founders the pioneers of of this groove um which um reminds me of the conversation we had yesterday that um, which one we've had so many oh okay well um I, I was telling you that you need to embrace that genre that new genre ah, you yeah. know that that new genre that we have you know that that involves like some key situations <laughs> you need to embrace it and and the only reason i think you find it hard to embrace it is because hey maybe you know you <laughs> know no, All right. Um, I think that's enough from you for now yeah. because you know, Mr. Instru- every week, every week I have this hope that you'll actually just show me some love and respect. But every week, every week, just when I'm not looking, you just throw in a jab. I'm just saying. No. So just because we've got a few seconds to go before we have to take a money break, ju- yeah. just to be clear. I don't hate that other genre. Okay. I don't. There's actually a lot of catchy joints. They just catch me like, you know. Mm. Um, I do think that uh, when you understand something, you do have a greater appreciation for it. I yeah. don't understand it the way that I understand hip-hop. In uh, Alekhong Heta, man, just because, you know, some of my favorites here. Yes. Yo. You know that gospel song? Hey. Jumping ship. That one? So that's the only reason why it hurts me. I don't hate the genre. I don't hate the culture. I don't hate but the But it's lifestyle. not a bad thing. Also, also, you cannot confirm that he's safe. You can't. Uh, yo, I, I'm happy. I'm happy for, for you to show us. I'm, I'm, 
I'm happy for you to to give us. A, I'm gonna play that other genre and, <laughs> and let's see what happens. I'm I'm I, I mean it's okay. up to you. I will apply my mind as we take this money break. It's just gone five minutes before we hit to seven o'clock. Five minutes before we get to the top of the hour. We go from six until eight p.m. and on a Wednesday, half past six to half past seven, we bring you the producer spotlight. Tonight we're taking a look at DJ Quick Prof Instro. Where are we going next? Okay, so um, the reason why I say DJ Quick was like a big influence is because um, first of all, shout out to all the parents. I know I, I, I say this. Shout out to the parents that support their kids when yes. they're doing what they're passionate about you know and i was also very fortunate to have parents that that understood uh, what i was passionate really? about and yeah they they supported it huh. um and and more than anything you know dj quick's house um was like some kind of music center and 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 i'm i'm meaning this not as in like a place like a center center but yeah, like yeah. it was more like a place where uh, peeps in the hood would just go to his house and and watch him DJ. Uh, they'd learn and and see. Okay, so this is how you blend. This oh. is how you do all of that. And it's the same sort of situation that happened at my house. You know, like you would uh, go somewhere. And when you come back, you find like four or five dudes like waiting for you at the <laughs> gate and they want to record, you know, uh, yeah. you, you know, you're, 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 you go into my room and like, what <laughs> human life? Because <laughs> it's like, it's like, yo, it's 10 dudes in my yeah. room. We're all recording. It's hot, you know, like it's. And, and and those are the the, the the most memorable experiences where you get to actually find yourself and you get to uh, uh, I guess practice your human uh, your not human but your your skills uh, talking to people your and social skills your social skills that's yeah. what I'm looking for yeah you 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 learn to deal with people you learn to uh, uh, create boundaries you know to say okay cool guys. On Sunday it's church. You, <laughs> you you can't come. You can't come to my house on a Sunday. It's it's church. I had this dude. Shout out to my dude Polter guys. Polter guys used to come to my house every single Sunday after church. He was the only guy that that I would allow Why? to come to because he went to church. Oh, okay. At least he was. You know he did the honorable thing and he was cleaned. You know straight from church. He wouldn't even go to his house. He would wow. he would come straight to my house from church and I appreciate. I appreciated that about him, you know, and he loved, he loved recording and he was always prepared. So yeah, shout out to, uh, to Poltergeist uh, for, yeah, those dope, uh, you know, humble beginnings. Um, from that time, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned that you still carry with you today from that particular time, the human life smell? Yes. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, I would say, man... I, I guess it was the first time where I was really exposed to other people's environments in the sense that um, I went to like a relatively multiracial school. Well, okay. it's not relative, like it was a multiracial school, you know, and I sort of mixed with people who were kind of like you. me like okay. me they were like me in terms of their their quality of life okay I get you understand you. and now hip-hop hip-hop being hip-hop is like it catches you whether you're in a mansion or some kukui you Your know Alison doesn't matter it there. doesn't matter when it catches you it catches you so the kind of people that would come to my house would sometimes make me nervous because i'd be like oh man <laughs> my mom is gonna side eye me and be like i'm, I'm hanging out with thugs you know <laughs> exactly exactly and that's pretty much the same thing that would happen with dj quick mm -hmm. he would have like proper uh, bloods and 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 parus you Yo. know <laughs> proper gangsters leaving their guns at the at, at his house you know that kind of stuff so it does kind of get like tricky <laughs> you know so you have to learn how to uh, have boundaries on some yo gents we need to you know guns at the door <laughs> Leave, real. leave them at the door you know <laughs> but like it's 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 an interesting thing because when you're passionate about music you sort of like allow it to 
like school you about what life is about mm. just recording those people and hearing what they were saying was crazy for me like wait so people actually live like this like right. they're they're like yo like it was crazy it was it was i heard some of the most shocking things cuz i was young i was like what 15 16 and hearing stories of real poverty you know yeah. and and it made me appreciate my own upbringing appreciate to have both parents around appreciate just having you know the life that i had you know so it, it's something that it, it it helps you grow as a not only as a producer but as a human being as a human being it's just gone seven well one minute after seven o'clock we're officially opening the second and final hour of the show it's still the producer spotlight for the next 29 minutes with mr instra tonight we're taking a look at dj quick only on the element seven minutes after seven o'clock hey that keeps happening at six it was six after six Ooh, things are in alignment it is the producer's spotlight oh just chill says i'm gonna get money use yes. and i'm with mr instro taking a look at dj quick yeah all right prof where are we going now okay so um the first group that he worked with right was uh Penthouse Players Click Penthouse Players Click yes it's a bit of a it's tongue twister tongue twist. I saw you just <laughs> holding me <Meg> like <laughs> 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 wow i'm so yeah you know like shout out to you pristine queen cuz yeah you and you know me better than most so. i got to know you well we got to make shout this out. work yeah yes. so so players click yeah so that that was one of the first groups that he, that he worked with that helped him sh- sort of sharpen his producer skills mm-hmm. and uh, like i mentioned earlier um it's through you know experiences with those guys that um he got the uh, the deal uh with Gonjo what's the label <laughs> hey the labels <laughs> profile with profile yes he 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 got signed to profile because he had had the experience with those guys and those guys were even at that time were OGs you okay. know and they sort of like knew the life of of the hood mm-hmm. and that's pretty much the stuff that they they uh, put in their music so he had a a, a good like foundation for him to to drop his own stuff um and also i like the fact that he never it, it's not even a question for him to to be limited you know he was he was an artist he was in he, he is an artist he is a dj he is a producer he's just an a sound guy right and um i i'll always say this that that it's it's important not to limit yourself try everything and um especially as a producer because when you become uh, the guy who's in the driver's seat you need to have an experience of what it's like to to be directing people right. you understand um i'm i'm more of a producer producer uh but i i did do some raps and uh come on it's hip hop's birthday give us a young 16 <laughs> are you are you serious? I can rap. Me, I can rap. I'm not I'm not Oh, it sounds like my dancing. This give me chat. give me a beat. Oh, this Where's chat. the beat? This chat. Uh, come on. How come about the headphone with like you? Hey, sir. <laughs> And we know what's happening with that. All right. Look. Um I'm going to do my level best to get something from Mr. Instro. Uh, I can rap. <laughs> in fact, in fact, if you if if I rap, then you dance. Oh no no no. <laughs> This is not a tit for tat. That's it not is. that's not what I agree to at all. Well, you know, it's up to you. I said, Mamela, this is the difference between you and I. Before we went to the break earlier on, I said I'll apply my mind, I'll think about it. Okay. You are saying, oh, I can rap. I can rap. I can, I rap. can rap. I okay, mean, so put your I don't have your mouth I, is. I don't I don't have to think about it, but you know, I I need to have a, an incentive. It's important. <laughs> I have one for you. I just can't say it on air. Let's go take a, a money break. Yo, yo. Time has gone by so quick. I can't believe this. 40 14 minutes left of the producer spotlight with mm. myself and Mr. Instro tonight taking a look at DJ Quick. So, we're pretty much going to talk for a great bulk of these 14 minutes and then we're going to close it off with a song. Yeah. All right, Mr. Instro, where can we go right now with this with these 14 minutes that we've got left? Okay. So, when he uh it was time for him to produce his second album, album. Right. Uh he teamed up with the producer um co-producer, mm-hmm. guitarist, yo, Robert <laughs> <laughs> Robert Bacon. 
Robert Bacon. Yes. I keep wanting to say Roger, and yes. I don't know why. Because you have another story in in the cut. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So you're Robert, excited. Ro- yeah, Ro- Robert Bacon, who 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 sort of incorporated uh, the live music element ah, to his production. Okay. Do you understand? The reason why we have these these beautiful bass lines these uh these crazy guitar riffs yes it's because of that guy's work nice and it reminds me of a, a certain time in my own life when um i i started producing music and man i just felt like it was missing something okay and uh we started this click me uh shout out to my dude Mtipa. Uh, we started uh, this duo called Consider Kush. Mm-hmm. So we started, um, you know, m- m- working on music, and then we felt like, yo, man, there's something missing. And then we brought in my dude uh, Tito to to play guitar, mm-hmm. and that kind of changed everything. Yeah. You know, like it 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 actually made the sound a lot more authentic, and it gave it a, a lot of space. Um, which is pretty much what happened with with DJ Quick's production. I right. think I think more than anything, um, the the groove was already there. So what he would do is he would play uh, guitar melodies, chords, and then DJ Quick would would come after him uh, with the drums. Uh-huh. Um, so he he already had the groove. The groove was there. It was just you know the melody, you know the bass line that that sort of needed a lo- uh, a lot more polishing. Mm-hmm. And that's when things just fell into place and his career soared. And the nice thing also is that he never he, he never got rid of the guy, you know. Okay. He never he, he as much as he was an addition and a co-producer, he knew his power. So producers, if you find someone who complements your sound, who yeah. understands you not just on a personal level but on a musical level that understands what you're trying to do because also you must remember that uh, DJ Quick is also an artist so when he raps so when he uses his voice on his music it's important to have somebody who's playing an instrument who's gonna uh you know make something that complements right what you've created yeah so it's yo if you find somebody who can do that then stick with them see how far you guys can go yeah right uh which leads me to uh a performance that they had in las vegas okay and they met uh roger troutman <laughs> yes yo i'm here for you man Z's, <laughs> like i'm saying very, very few people know me <laughs> like you do. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so he met Roger Troutman. Um, Roger Troutman is also a, a guitarist. He was out there also performing with his band, and he introduced DJ Quick to the Talk Box. So, okay. so, so for those of you that don't know what a Talk Box is, yes, it's the predecessor to Auto Tune. So, so you know, like that weird sound. That black street uh, that Teddy yes. Riley used, yes. baby, that sound. Hectic. That is a talk box. So he introduced DJ Quick to that sound, and the rest is history. When you listen to a lot of the stuff that DJ Quick does, um, the talk box is is always it always makes a an entrance somewhere okay. here and there, right? But he didn't he didn't just do that. He also introduced them to a new style of production using the guitar. Um, Robert actually goes on to say that he, he uh, because of his experience with Roger, he never quite played the guitar the same anymore mm-hmm. because he had learned so much from from uh, from Roger. So yes. it became it became a a holy mecca moment, you wow. know, a, an epiphany. And it's beautiful to to have those moments with your partner, you yeah. know, uh, where you're both inspired musically, and um, you 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 take a, a new direction, especially yeah. now that you're gonna work on new music. And when you hear the second album, you really can tell that okay, cool. Now these guys are seasoned musicians, and they're comfortable in the sound that they're making. So now. I'd like you to please unpack this idea of uh, crossing over because, um, especially because you just mentioned, you know, 
being uh, settled in your sound, finding yeah. your sound, yeah. right? And then there's this whole crossover thing that happens. Right, it's like, right, right. yo, why now when you've just like gotten really, really good and honed in here? Yeah. And then, oh yeah, gotta. Yeah, what's, be- what's beautiful about uh, DJ Quick is that he already had the groove. Mm. He was making hip hop music. I mean, he was making hip hop music at the time when Boom Bab was like taking over yeah you know we were bobbing our heads it ain't no dancing there <laughs> you know you are bobbing your head Rude. <laughs> <laughs> you know and it was big at the time so um his grooves uh, yo man you have to dance like I, I think that's what really sets him apart and sort of like defines the west coast sound mm. you know west coast was more like yo let's you know involve the ladies let's yeah. shake their thing things you know let's <laughs> you know let's excite the crowd a bit and um so so that makes it so easy for someone to 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 be a singer and go hey i can actually you know i see myself on this song just like we heard the tony tone song let's get down right? let's get down let's get down need i say more yeah like he's <laughs> he, the, the the sound is so authentically like dance driven yes that you you can't help it right and and the nice thing is that the song actually starts with dj quick rapping mm-hmm. which gives you an idea that yo this is this is a rap beat right do you understand it's not he doesn't sound weird for rapping yeah true because you know when you do like house music or or any other genre and you start rapping on the you remember there was a time when people were rapping on com and i was like <laughs> what <laughs> It's too fast, bro. Like, no, but some of them were doing it like quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. If you say so. I, I, I just couldn't understand it. But Yo. but the point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, the groove the groove was yeah. solid. The groove with DJ Quick is always accommodating to a rapper. It's also accommodating to a singer. So True. So if 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 you're an artist in general, it's easy for you to just jump on a DJ quick beat. So that's why it's right. easy to 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 go to cross over and work with your Truth Hurts, work with your Elder Barge, work with all yeah. sorts of uh, Janet Jackson. Uh, yo, this guy is very well established. I think, yeah, like as far as West Coast goes, it's Dr. Dre, mm-hmm. and then it's DJ Quick. Wow. Yeah hectic yeah. all right so we have got five and a half minutes left yeah. right and we do need to play a song but i think it's very important that we talk money do you oh, know yeah oh, aziz it's important <laughs> jo, 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 this guy's story is sad man okay guys we need to you know what it's it's very important to to, to keep uh solid boundaries man Mm-hmm. You need to keep solid boundaries. So what happened to DJ Quick was um because he was so successful, he was taking care of different people. Okay. And this one day he got a call from someone saying, "Yo man, there's a plot by a family member of yours. Imagine a family member of yours who's trying to solicit money from you." Right? Wow. And, um, you know, they were talking crazy stuff like they were going to kidnap your kids from school. Imagine, family member. Imagine. So, my man DJ Quick is from the hood. He's around gangsters. So, you know, he lost it and went straight to his sister and assaulted his sister. (gasps) And found himself in jail for two months. Wow. So, guys, the lesson is have boundaries guys like yes be a provider like help out where you can with your fam but don't let people get too familiar with you and start counting your pockets Mm. and start thinking that they can get money from you either way and also like we need to anger management as men guys i I was i was going you know what i mean but you got it yeah as men we need to we need to really work on our tempers we need to work on our emotional intelligence uh, because he wasted two months well 
he wouldn't say that it's a waste you know because he actually says those those two months were necessary for him to actually regroup yeah and 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 start properly focusing on his career so i guess it wasn't that bad but i think the there's so many other meaningful ways that you can you know that you can go he can go on vacation he's rich, rich enough to do it you know take time off he was rich enough to not do anything for that entire year right but he spent it um, in a jail cell mm-hmm. which could have been avoided and also you know just yeah family members guys don't the sense of entitlement is is actually embarrassing especially with us people of color you know we 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 always we we tend to think that now that the guy is has made it we've also made it too yep we we need to have a level of respect and if they decide to give you stuff let that be you know gratitude 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 you know what i mean and not not now feel entitled to it so very valuable lesson there all right so a number of valuable lessons there um also don't ever raise your hand to a woman no i just had to i just had to put no. that in don't ever 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 all right uh we're almost done we're done we're done done we're done uh, just okay because there wasn't really enough time to to chop it up about dj quick please like just uh do some research about him if you're a producer like just just listen to his music mm-hmm. uh if you're trying to uh if you're trying to know what having a sound is okay um of the songs we've heard you you hear the the christmas bells you hear the do do yes the thing that gets you dancing exactly yes. you'll hear that that's that's his sound so listen to more of his music in fact that's what i want to do going forward i don't i want to structure it's just today it caught me off guard but i want to actually spend more time with us playing the music and just talking briefly um because i think it's important to establish these producers sound yes okay because that's what really uh, separates a legendary producer to like any other producer that right. that that can produce okay. if you understand so let's let's listen to more of dj quick's music i mean he's still making music today Dope. so listen out to what he's got to offer right now and yeah man let's uh let's support and and run the numbers up let's support run the numbers up and let's meet again next week wednesday half past six to half past seven we close it off with talib khali put it in the air yeah the producer spotlight with mr instro you can be a beat maker and not be a music producer but when you're a music producer you don't have to be a beat maker only on the element